it's uh, there's an old expression that some coaches have used that uh, you only play on the back line if you're not good enough to play on the forward line. Well, in the case of Carlton, that certainly is not the case. The skill of their defence, uh, led by Hunter. Um, in possession, hand Over at the MCG. Russo going forward up toward Big Burn, who stands his ground. Could be a goal. Could it is. Goal. It's through. It's the goal. ball bounces there through for yes. a goal. Where Perevic's there. Moncrief on the Too late. And Moncrief, and the ball is scooped in by Tuck, by Tuck. and it's a goal. And it's a goal. I thought it could have been a Perevic free kick. Takes it away from him. A bit of a wrestling match out there too. It's Glasgow on top, but Dear Pomenico goes for the dump. Carlton bounce back. Ashman. To Ditchburn. And he has put it through. And it's a, a goal. Piece of play by the defence of Hawthorne. His power play now as Harms takes the ball for Carlton. Look at that hand pass to McClure. The chance of a score as McClure goes in towards the goal square. And makes no mistake for Carlton. The corridor, so to speak. Kennedy got Clark gets the ball out into the open. Harms takes the ball again. He's got another one. Another goal. There's time to Harms, gets the ball out to Ditchburn, but Harms has made position, takes the return hand pass, and look at that snap for another Carlton goal. It is a miracle goal, he's kicked it. Coaches Alan Jeans He's done it with uh, fine football. Uh, the so-called injuries of the players were not really showing out. Uh, those players were certainly not starring. But uh, Loveridge, who uh, is on screen at the present moment, uh, was a very effective player around the forward line, taking a, a number of marks. And I was quite surprised after half time the fact that uh, Loveridge and Russo were changing on the interchange bench because uh, both players I thought would have been far better value out on the ground. Uh, another surprising move was when Payton came off uh, and the burn was shifted from full forward into the ruck that meant that Moncrief came on the ground and he certainly was not in touch. Uh, but during the, the uh, second quarter, uh, we saw Carlton coming back into the game and not that uh, you could possibly envisage the uh, onslaught that was going to happen in the third term, but during the second quarter, there was a lot of play that Carlton did and, uh, anticipate, I think, of getting on top. But uh, they really could not get their game going early in the piece. For Susto, that was a perfect example. The, uh, they just couldn't quite get their real flowing game. And so full credit probably goes to Hawthorne because of the way they tackled. Terry Wallace giving a hand pass over there. He was not his uh, usual dominant self and nobody could have expected him to be after being in hospital for the time he was and having the operation that he did. But he still certainly did not let them down. And uh, much has been said about the injured players that they were supposedly chosen. I don't know about you, Bob, but uh, I most certainly would have chosen those players myself. And uh, I support uh, Alan Jeans really in his selection. Anybody else would nowhere near, well, certainly they didn't play well, but uh, prior to the game, I would have chosen those players too. Bob, your thoughts? Well, I think, uh, along with Bobby, that uh, the fellows that were selected, I mean, Matthews has played with a bad with a bad groin or whatever it is all the year and has done very well at times. Wallace is their most successful kick getter, so you really couldn't knock him, could you? And, and Knight's... If he came back to form, it was a gamble you take with Knight. And actually, I didn't think he was doing too bad. You know, he wasn't marking the ball like Peter Knight. He was contesting very hard and trying as hard as he could. But uh, after uh, the uh, interval, I thought that Carlton were just uh, supreme in everything that they did. They showed once again almost uh, in a similar fashion they did against uh, South Melbourne when they kicked the 12 goals in the first quarter I think it was they kicked 11 goals four and their football was faultless it wasn't a one uh, one man of uh, but uh, uh, harm certainly was the the spark uh, yeah the catalyst that got them going there was no doubt away about it that it looked fairly tight in that uh, in the third quarter for a start didn't it yes. because it was goal for goal, goal. there for a while and all yeah. of a sudden harms broke yeah. loose from the wing i think he kicked three goals himself didn't he in and, four and, minutes and, did he kick four in that quarter? Three and four minutes, four, in the, four in the quarter. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and it really was a magnificent effort on his part. I think one... John Newman? Well, yeah, it's just academic whether you'd play those players or not because they have no one else to play and they had to play them. So the choice wasn't a hard one to make. They just had no one else to put in. Well, how do we know that, though, John? I mean, well, because... Well, we know this afternoon, I suppose. This is the second quarter. OK, the second quarter. You know, I, Bob says that uh, Carlton was supreme in the second half, and I don't believe that's any to the great extent of Carlton's ability. And he's a surprise selection. Clark, wasn't he? Well, Clark is an amazing play. He nearly breaks every rule in the book as far as orthodox play goes, but he will kick three and four goals every game, no matter whether he comes on at half-time or he plays the whole game. 
Harms, as you said, uh, and, then, and Ashman there, they started uh, Carlton on the right road, but I believe if they'd been playing a side like Richmond, I know this is hypothetical, they would have been 10 goals down at half-time, given their half-time form yesterday, Carlton. It's amazing how Geelong could let three players go, like uh, Landy, Preston, and now Clark, and Clark was a very important player yesterday again. And now that, that, that incident there, that's what Bazusto got reported over, uh, because he argued uh, dissent, I think, with the umpire that uh, Perovic should have been paid that mark or a free kick. I think the decision was right not to give him the free kick or the mark for that, but Basusto got reported for that. Sheldon getting the ball out. Sheldon ran Wallace round for half the game, trying to tire him out. A definite tactical plan, I believe. Parkins have told Sheldon to keep uh, Wallace running because he was uh, match, his match fitness wasn't up to scratch and it paid out because in the end Wallace just couldn't keep up. And Doug, your thoughts? Uh, I'll just, just mention one player on the wing who's uh, absolutely brilliant for Carlton, that was Glascott. I think that uh, his game was superb and he, he doesn't look like a footballer, there he is there. Third quarter, he gets a hand pass over to Malin and uh, this was the quarter when the, it was really set alight by Carlton and that's the sort of football they're doing. Fitzpatrick, just a short passing and Ditchburn who was leading and too fast for Ayers as well as Moore. Moore was on him for a, for a start, then Ayers was shifted back, and uh, Ditchburn, the leading and the passing by his players up the field was uh, brilliant. Would that and have been Ditchburn the finished up with six goals, I think. Moore has ever been taken from the ground. And this is oh. Curly Austin, who did a magnificent job yes, early he, in the game. Yes, well, he? he did on An English. He did, but uh, on. Uh, on, in fact, Matthews, but uh, there's Perovic, as you see, kicking it over, and there's the man of the match in that th third quarter. Brilliant play, over to McClure, and it was a good goal, this for McClure, as he had to line it up from a, a very difficult angle. They always hard shots, those, and he, he made no mistake about that. Thanks. You see those th players, players that were just on the screen, the McClure and Harms, although he ended up winning the game for them, Harms, they were very quiet, those players, up until half-time, and I'm just saying with a side that was fit and full of running and vigour like Richmond, I don't think they would have let Carlton back into the game, but I know that's just a uh, hypothetical ball thing ball to say. No, I said they didn't have a choice. Well, There's uh, Johnson. Now, if he has played his last game this year, it'll be a tragedy for the Carlton side because uh, he's a very good player if he concentrates solely on playing football instead of trying to go on with the heroics and antics of uh, the rest of the game. English uh, played a very solid game for Carlton, as, and uh, we just saw the uh, full forward Ditchburn, who, as we thought last week, uh, was too mobile for Moore, uh, far too mobile for him, and more, they're going to have a problem, and they, if they're going to put Moore on Blight next week, it's going to be a problem for Doug, them. has that been the, the difference to Carlton on their forward line to put Ditchburn up there, moving around? I don't know whether it's been the difference, but, but oh, geez, improved. He's, he's leading, he's kicking, and he's certainly kicked over 50 goals. He can now find a hole to lead yeah. to, and he is a magnificent straight kick, and he's a one-grab mark. If and the he's ball they can pass the ball. They can both you and Jack have changed your opinion from last week and you said uh, he just wasn't the answer. You couldn't imagine him kicking nine goals against uh, Dent. And he's averaged over six goals a game since he's played a full forward. Yeah, How do you answer that, you fellas, down that there? All the week, did you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, they took the full back off. Yeah, now, Bob, yes, he was injured. This, this is the this is the last quarter here, and you'll see. I mean, you probably won't get a picture of it here, but they became very complacent and arrogant, Carlton, in this last quarter. And while Bob doesn't necessarily think that's a bad thing to be when you've got a side down and out, uh, they wouldn't want to uh, carry that practice on for the rest of the year because at the 25-minute mark of the last quarter Fitzpatrick and Austin walked off the ground in their dressing gowns I mean they thought well the game's over and done with and it obviously well, was, it was but I mean it's a very uh, a and very someone could have been injured couldn't it someone could have been injured very complacent thing to do well, they still would have won with the 17 men of the way they, they were would playing have, oh, but that's the that that sort of spirit can run through a side very quickly is that, and the, they can, is that uh, what you were talking about then John with a the casual way that they look to be handballing over the top very, and uh, they became that's very a sign of a good side Sam well, oh, they are a good side Peter, but I'm, I don't think that uh, it does. Uh, that, that sort of thing can uh, get right into you very quickly, and you can just lose that fine edge if you allow that. And when you come up against a side who will put pressure on you for four quarters, and you try and get away with that sort of thing, I think you'll find. And you're you'll saying unstuck. that Carlton cannot beat Richmond next week. Uh, well, I'm not saying that. I think, personally, Richmond will win next week, and I believe Carlton will win the premiership. But I uh, just think that. Uh, Carlton yesterday didn't, uh, those Hawthorne, I think Carlton won in spite of themselves yesterday and I believe Hawthorne just couldn't man up 
because of those injuries and a couple of yeah, players out of form. Of themselves, well, I don't believe... Bob said they were supreme in the second half. I believe it was more because Hawthorne uh, couldn't Did take the game up to them rather than Carlton's brilliance. Oh, oh, they do play no, the ball good, so. beautifully to position, Sam. They control um, the ball. They have position the ball the all the time. The only way you can play the ball brilliantly to position is if you're under no pressure, Bob. When well, there's people you... running at you like Hawthorne did for that half of that game, they scared them. Uh, Carl, that Hawthorne's put the fear of God into Carlton the first half of that game, but they couldn't There are up. very few defences as skillful as the Carlton, Carlton defence. Yeah. And, that, um, I'm not and just delivering the today, ball I'm as well as ever. the Carlton defence. They're stoppers and skillful as well. They're uh, disposal out of the back line. No, really, that starts to set up the play yeah. that does that makes it look easy. Okay, just... the Wales will have $500 for the outstanding player of the final series, and our commentators will vote 3-2-1 and one on that at the end of the final series. But... For academic interest, how would you have voted for yesterday's game, Bob? I would have given uh, one vote uh, there yesterday to Wayne Harms. Uh, he was certainly the match winner in that uh, third quarter, but uh, even for that effort, 